Hi, welcome to this tutorial in my series on discrete random variables. And in this tutorial, what we're going to look at is what we mean by e of x squared and also how we calculate it. And to do this, what I'm going to do is return to our spinner that we had in an earlier tutorial. Remember, we had a spinner that was divided up into eight equal sectors and we had these scores on it one two and three and the wheel was spun and the score was the one that was underneath the pointer when it stopped and I showed you how to draw up a probability distribution table for the score and it was something like this we had let x be the random variable, the score on the wheel, and you could get those observed values of 1, 2 or 3. And the probability that the score on the wheel was any of the observed values was listed here. So to get a score of 1, as you can see we had a couple of 1's here, so it was 2 out of 8. Okay and similar results resulted for the getting the 2 and the 3. Now what I want to do is just suppose we took the same wheel again okay but only this time what we did was that we squared all of these values so in other words instead of having 1 we've got 1 squared, 3 squared, 3 squared and so on all the way around here. We'll just mark those on. Okay, right. And so we've got a new wheel with new scores on. 1, 9 and 4. So we've got a new table that we can draw up. We can now draw up a table for the square of the scores. So if we were to define a new random variable, let's say let x squared be the random variable, RV for short, and we'll have it as the square of the scores. So just write that in there, square of the scores. So what's this table going to look like then? Well our observed value, instead of it being the score X up here on the wheel, it's now going to be the square of those scores, so basically X squared. And what could they be? Well, we can see that you could get 1 squared, which we know is 1. You could get 2 squared, and you could get 3 squared. And what would those probabilities be? What would be the probability that the random variable x squared, the square of the scores, equals any of these observed values? x squared. Well clearly the probabilities haven't changed from what they were up here. You still got the same number of sectors showing 1 squared as you had with 1 and so on. So these probabilities are going to stay exactly the same 2 eighths, 1 eighth and 5 eighths. So what does this mean? Well if you were watching my earlier tutorials you would have seen that we worked out the expected value of x the expected mean if you like e of x and how did we do that we did that as doing the sum of x times the probability of getting this that observed value so if we were working out e of x for this table what we would have done would have been 1 times 2 eighths plus the observed value here 2 times its probability 2 times 1 eighth plus 3 times 5 eighths that was e of x but we could equally work out e of x squared what we would expect the square of the scores to be and that would be called e of x squared and to do that nothing's going to change. We take our observed values and we multiply each of them with our probability. 
and we sum it. So e of x squared becomes the sum of x squared times the corresponding probability. And this is something that you really do need to remember. So let's just highlight that, OK? So when it comes to working out e of x squared for this, then what we've got is e of x squared is going to equal essentially the sum of x squared times the probability. And so it's going to be 1 squared times 2 eighths. 1 squared times 2 eighths. And then we've got sigma to plus, OK, the sum of. And then we've got the next one, 2 squared times 1 eighth. And finally, plus 3 squared times 5 eighths. And if you work this out on your calculator, what you should find you get is 51 over 8. Or if you have it as a decimal, 6.375. So what we would expect then is that if we were to spin this spinner lots of times, we would expect to have a mean score when it comes to the square of the scores to be 6.375. Okay, so hopefully you've got some idea of the meaning behind e of x squared, okay, and how we calculate it. And this particular formula, this function here, you're going to meet again when it comes to calculating the variance from a discrete uh, probability distribution table. So do make sure that you're familiar with this, okay, before moving on to calculating variance. Okay, well, I hope that's been of some use to you. Thanks for listening. And uh, as I say, you're able to use this function now in other questions.